life's a Bianca. So me and Kelly create the funkra. Don't interrupt me during me mantra. I think it's a very powerful story to tell, and I think it's going to be very important for people to watch it. Everything seems like it's going to be all right until the very end, when everything goes horribly wrong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, everybody was young once, and everybody thought they were indestructible at one time. You see them acting like they're big shots, they're big gangsters, but in truth, they were kids. The decision's been made. For a 15-year-old innocent to be murdered in such a callous way. I would never rat you guys out. It was heartbreaking. This movie is certainly an exploration of loss. Loss of child's life, loss of youth, loss of a certain lifestyle that people can never live again and probably should have in the first place. Fuck that. You pay me. All of it. I really enjoyed this script for a lot of reasons. One of which uh, was because I was already familiar with the story. And I guess because it was involving kids that are my age. I was interested like everybody was. After reading the script, my reaction was, this is a story that people should hear. Because it's not just about gangs or drugs or bad kids. It's, it's about family and, you know, lack thereof. Nick handled this material so well. And I cared about these people. And they're not necessarily likable. And I, I think that's the quality that I responded to the most. When I read the script that he had written, I was heartbroken. I was just heartbroken for all of them, quite frankly. For the mother, for the dead boy, for the brother of the dead boy, the father, for the unwitting accomplices, and even for the witting accomplices, quite frankly, and even for the killer. Don't you fucking get it, you moron? There's a missing person poster on every street corner. You're in deep shit, Johnny. The cops pick you up. You're doing 25 to life. You don't think I know that? Fuck your life up so bad. Emil was the first guy that came in. He campaigned hard for the party, wanted to do it. He was a really talented guy, and I liked his attitude, and uh, I hired him on the spot. Justin I had met, and I liked immensely. It was a part called for a guy who was the handler of this 15-year-old hostage, who the hostage looks up to, idolizes, hangs out with, be they befriend each other, and uh, I thought, who better to idolize than Justin? And, uh, I talked to him about it, I said, he want to do it, and he, he agreed. And Bruce and Sharon were submissions, I just submitted to their agents and told them I had no money and threw myself on the mercy of the court. They were gracious enough to, to help us out. I actually hadn't been very familiar with that story until I read the script and then I became more familiar with the story. There's this expression that people have all the time when they're in a 12-step program, I hit bottom. And I felt, particularly due to the nature of this crime and the place that it took this mother, that it was relevant to show what bottom looks like. They say <laughs> there's a reason for everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> if that God's got a purpose for me. <laughs> You better get the fuck down here and tell me what it is. I'm playing Johnny True Love. So I, I did as much research as I thought would help me. And then there was a certain point where I made the conscious decision of going, okay, well, I'm going to do, you know, the basic research. But then, you know, the intrinsic details of this character, I'm going to create as an actor. Give me my fucking man. Jake Mazursky. I think he's just a wounded kid. It was certainly a fun one to play. There's a lot of freedom and a lot of pleasure to play uh, somebody who just doesn't care. I don't know how to describe any character that I play. Um, it's really hard to compartmentalize um, characteristics or attributes when you've been living in them for, you know, four months, trying to figure out what it means to be a man and playing gangster and then realizing the line between playing and becoming is is really thin. I found that really appealing. You owe somebody money? Jesus. You just tell me how much and I will write the check. 
It's not really like that, Olivia. When we had to do the scene where I attack Ben Foster and start hitting him, because actually you have to hit a person when you're doing that kind of a scene. You can't do those stunt hits. And he made me hit him until his nose started to bleed. And then Nick cut. And I just looked at him like, what have you done, you know? And I got him ice. And he's like, honey, it's a movie. And what we're doing is so much more important than that. And it's just a few seconds on film, but you have to see that she's just at her wit's end and she doesn't know what to do. And that he's making his family go crazy. And every family who has an addict in it has been there. It's ugly. And he knew that you have to have those out of control, awful things in the film or you're not telling that story. I had fun playing Miss Sharon. Uh... It was certainly a special experience, one that I'm not gonna forget for a long time. Came into work and got the shit kicked out of me and loved every second of it. Can't fake that. Sharon means business, and I, and I love that. Fucking poor sack of shit right here. Here, let me touch you. Here you go. Here we go. And uh, let's do it again. Well, there were a few things about Alpha Dog that made me really want to do the movie. Part of it is that Nick Cassavetes and I kind of grew up in the Hollywood community together. And I've always thought that he was a very interesting and superbly gifted filmmaker. I believe I'm gonna echo what everybody says about working with Nick is that he's, he's an actor's director. He's incredibly compassionate. And he's really supportive of all of us weirdos. And does everything he can in his possibility to make it as comfortable and as uh, uh, easy and as focused as possible. He knows, you know, how to get to you and how to how to work with you and how to really get what he wants and take the scene in a good direction. And he's very decisive, you know, he knows what he wants, but he's also open to experimenting and he's just very creative and intelligent. Nick creates uh, a wonderful atmosphere. It's very open. Sean, since he got uh, directed by me, by me in this, he said he's not going to work for any other director. That's right. That's it. Just, but you have to do more movies. I have. I'm going to do a lot, but I plan on doing at least four or five a year. Overall, it's a pretty pretty loose set, and that's great as an actor because it, it frees you up to, to feel like you're not inhibited. He enjoins them into this world that he sees that they might not be quite completely aware of. The first thing he said to me, we got to get them working out. And the next thing I know, we have created like a boot camp where all of a sudden all of these actors are coming to what they think is to work out, to buff up their bodies and to look good. But in essence, they are creating that fraternal bond of this gang of kids. All of this to create these moments that will show up later on that will come from places that they never even recognize. I don't know, you, you, you get like a weird endurance when you do that kind of training. It definitely kind of makes you a little tougher, I think. And that was kind of, I mean, that was what it did for me. What are we doing over there? You can do triceps, you can do triceps yeah. or I can put a bench there, and you can do a, <clears throat> a stool there, and you can do pull downs, whatever you want to do. Triceps. That's cool. I think what ended up happening was we became so tight and we formed this bond, and it really does seem like we've been around each other for years. And it worked twofold. Nick's intuition was correct, I think. I think it really brought everybody together uh, and made the connections pretty, pretty damn thick. It was intense, but everybody loved it because Nick always kept the vibe jovial and, and, and fun. And if you finish too fast, dump it out and pick, pick it back, back up, up again. again. The actors that I just got to spend time with, I mean, and, and get into their heads. I mean, I learned so much. I learned more from this film than I've learned with any film. I think the most relevant thing that we can take away from the movie is that by not being present and compassionate with one another and with our children, we're teaching our children that they're supposed to behave as adults, as children. We're stealing their childhoods. Kids are supposed to be kids. They're children. Let them have their childhood. 
there's a kid that lost his life. He's 15 years old, never really going to have a chance to be who he was. His uh, life was taken away. Really, I would hope that maybe we just catch a glimpse of the kid. It's a tough story to sit through, you know? I mean, it doesn't leave you with a resolve, but I think that's what's so special about this film, is that it lets you choose your own resolve. It lets you create that if you choose to. Have women and will travel. She will straddle. Saddle up bitches, cause this is a real battle. I'm I think at the end of the day, you'll see these characters and you'll say, oh, they're not bad kids. Nobody wanted this to happen. It's ignorance and it's naivety of not understanding the consequences of life and death. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I'm gonna hunt you down. Any chance that people are gonna have to learn from this movie is a good thing. You know, and I don't think that it should be like shunned or, or hidden. You know, I think that people should take what they can from that. You know, when you go to see a Nick Cassavetes movie, that you're in for a ride. Nick has this ability to, to rip your heart out. Uh, in a lot of his movies, there's always seems to be some sort of major event, and this has that, and it's it's touching. We the party people night and day. Living crazy is the only way.